court and uh, this is a uh, first big camera shoot for a while and uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna wing it well oh, yeah well Christmas time in the city I found myself in the emergency room Christmas time in the city I sat in my room. They gave me tests. They gave me a CAT scan. Didn't find any cats. An MRI gave me some advent. It knocked me out. That's all. So, uh... Well, a month ago, uh, I guess six weeks ago, I was fine. I was great. I <laughs> was, you know, my usual self and uh, drinking my daydream rogue beer. And uh, I only have about four or five cans a day. But uh, then we went to the Raccoon Lodge and I had this awesome... Dip sandwich, French dip, and uh, no beer there. And I uh, came home, well, and I went to sleep. Woke up and took one of the million peas I take every night. And uh, went back to sleep, got up, and uh, I was a, a mess, man. I couldn't talk, and I couldn't stand up. My knees kept popping. So walking, walking. I'm by myself, I hope you understand Oh yeah Ah, this Iceman guitar is great, I like it And... I miss my uh, original Iceman, but I man, I played the shit out of that. That's when I had the band Rude Awakening, and uh, we played everywhere. We played the Long Goodbye, and we played every week. And I mean, we did a I did a couple hundred gigs in like two years.
what she gonna do, babe? When you can't sing it no more When I think you're the limit You wanna give it some more You wanna spin it till you're dizzy And you're gonna fall on the floor on bass and Dave Phillips. How you doing, Dave? Yeah, it's a uh, old Gimpy Matt. And uh, anyway. <laughs> yep. Got to get away. Leave me alone. We did all these songs. Boys will be boys. That song, I had this girlfriend named Kem Zanger back in, uh, well, must have been 79 to 80, something like that. She was always, you know, she wanted to get married, have babies, and that is just not anything I ever wanted to do. But um, she had an old mom. And I didn't work. I was unemployable. And so she kept saying, you've got to tell, tell my mom what, you know, you're working in a warehouse or something. So I'd lie. And I'm not a good liar when I have to do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I wrote the song about, uh, you know, boys will be boys. I saw it coming down today when I heard the neighbors say, that this boy ain't doing right. You know, I didn't have enough. I make this baby to you. So I just lied. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's another time in my life when people just won't own up and have the courage just to say what's going on. And, uh, you know, like uh, my mom, when I, I had a... <laughs> First thing, I went in for a tonsillectomy. I was six. And when I was born in a military hospital, they didn't circumcise me, which is weird. And so they decided to circumcise me then when I was six. So uh, I, you know, prepared for this for months. I got put out. I was, it was a nightmare with a anesthesia. Wow, I still remember the nightmare. And uh, when I woke up, I went to the bathroom, and I was six. I had a bloody penis bandage on me. A bandage on my penis was all bloody. I came out and said, what the hell? What? Well, I didn't say what the hell. What happened? Did they get me mixed up? Because my throat didn't hurt at all. Well, my mom didn't want to tell me what the deal was. She, she didn't want to get me upset, so I've held that against her my entire life for not telling me what the fucking deal was. The second time was uh, I had this German Shepherd that I had become really close with. I got him when I was about right around that age and then, and then by age nine she just decided it's too much dog for me. Thanks. I spent every day when she was at work or something uh, with this dog. 
And uh, I got I walked into the house and the phone rang and I picked it up and there, she put an ad in to give the dog away without telling me, without saying what was going on. <laughs> So, uh, uh, it was just like that. My, my entire life has been a series of those. So, I've, I've built up a lot of resentment in my life for, for that. You know, so, yeah, the, the family came and took my dog. I didn't even get to say goodbye to him, Blitz, and uh, it just uh, killed me. I, had, I have serious trust issues. Now it's just I just wish the people die. Is that or I will continue to haunt them for the rest of their life and past. And it happened with uh, my bandmates and wild dogs. They didn't want to tell me what the pro- problem was, so so they uh, got a new singer. And we had a meeting with this manager who worked for Journey and Night Ranger, and uh, I, we got on a bus, and uh, I spent all day the day before with this guy talking about the strategy for the future of the wild dogs that he was going to manage. And uh, Jeff, the guitar player, you know, you got to figure, guys that will fuck girls at gigs and then stop at somebody else's house to wash themselves off so they don't smell like that before they go home to their wife. Something's going to go on, so they didn't tell me. Uh, they, they got on the bus and said, uh, I'm Jeff, the guitar player, introducing himself to this guy. And this is our new singer. Huh? What? So I don't I don't have to be here with you you jerks. Okay, I'm going. So I left. I had uh, the Evil Genius Band together, and I was uh, recording songs for them for the Third Wild Dogs record, and uh, that's what happened. And uh, they did that again with another singer, where uh, people from other cities called me and said, "Hey, I thought you were in the band." I said, well, I am. And they said, no, I got a pressure list. They said they have a new singer. Oh. Well, great. Well, I called everybody up three times. And the manager, too. And he said, no, they didn't tell you? I said, hey, you know what happened last time. They're, they're pussies. They, don't, they won't tell me what's going on. And uh, so I said, well, Okay. I left the band on stage with a full house on Dean's birthday. My friend Eric Frey, Erie Boner, a drummer that played with the, the band before Poison Idea of the Imperialist Pigs, he came up with this idea. He says, look, dude, dude, they will tell you what's going on, so don't tell them what's going to go on. Dress, make it seem like it's person regular. And when you go out there, say thank you, good night, and leave. And that's exactly what I did. I left out the side door of the starry night, ran out of the steps, got into the waiting getaway car, and left. Went to my house to the villa. And uh, (laughs) I said, wait, you know, our our plan was to get 15 or more people. I I got 20 people in, free. And they all went and got their money back, but they didn't pay cover to get in. then went back to my apartment with about 160 or 70 bucks where we bought beer and had a good old time the next day Steve Hanford from Mayhem and uh, later Poison Idea came over and he said Matt you want to join Mayhem I said yeah and I joined Mayhem the very next day we recorded the album Bird Alive at Recording Associates, the same place we did the Wild Dogs album, and uh, uh, I got a solo deal because 
Mike Varney didn't like the way he did, ditched me. So and he liked my songs. So he said, get Dean, and we'll do a solo album. The first guy he put me together with was going to be Ingve, But Ingve was on tour and not available. The next guy was a kid out in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania named Paul Gilbert. He hadn't moved to the West Coast yet. And uh, he was more, he was too Van Halen. I really liked the Ingve sound. So he said, hey, I know. The guy that replaced Ingve and Steeler is available, Kurt James. And he's a Hendrix fan and a only child. We hit it off real good. And we did the number one record, Dr. Mastermind. Me and Dean and Kurt James. And uh, Ron Chick played rhythm guitar. I don't, I don't think it made it on the record, but uh, nobody up here was good enough. That seems to be the story. <laughs> so, um, yada, yada, yada. Went on through that, and, you know, I've done numerous lineups of every band. And uh, in June 2020, uh, Dave Hathaway died. He was my best friend and drummer and a uh, motorhead drummer. Took a nap and didn't wake up. It's tragic. The same week that I got Bell's palsy, and the same week that my mom's bones started uh, collapsing on themselves, and uh, it was a horrible week. But my mouth got pretty much like this, and uh, you can see it if you watch the YouTube videos. Better, you know, a year older, a year or so older. It took me about a year to get back to normal, but uh, I wasn't all the way normal. Then I had a stroke on right before Christmas. Uh, that's one way of getting out of going to Debbie's sister's for Christmas, right? My mom said, you could have just said no. Yeah, right. I planned it like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's some stupid thing where I made a comment on one of their Facebook pages, and they, they're all, you know, family it's bullshit <clears throat> and uh, I was just talking about a gun law well Ian's girlfriend had Ian call Debbie to tell me to just knock it off it's like like you know me as you know me as long as you have her you can balls up and tell me fucking pussies and so I said well fine if you you know what you you're, you're not gonna tell me by yourself fuck it so I erased the comment and I blocked every one of them fuckers I don't care if I ever talk to them again and uh the sister's daughter joined the the army Maybe we should go to Ukraine, save our country from Ukraine, from Russia. R wrong. Uh, I think that's already happened. Putin has got such a stronghold on everything that we are Putin's bitch. But, uh, yeah, America's not the strong superpower it was 50 years ago. Now, all those deals and all those leaders that were made the deals with us are dead and there's new kings new Saudi king he doesn't want to have anything to do with us he likes Russia and China and Iran well it's a new day That's the name. That's the trouble of mine. But you know, then I get told, "Well, you shouldn't hold grudges." I don't hold grudges. It's just if you're gonna tell me, you're gonna good. You know, it takes two to be a, a team. I'm not always the bad guy, but I'm always made out to be the bad guy, and I'm fucking sick of it. And uh, you, you know, oh, you shouldn't have done this. Yeah, Dan Crenshaw did the same thing 
with me and all his friends. You man, you, you, you're the bad guy. Why? Because I get the gigs and you, I won't let you play 20 minutes of my set on it? Fuck you. Fuck you all. I have my website, and speaking of Putin, it's going to be, it's paid for. And the name is paid for. And it's all private, where you can't find out who owns it, till 2036. That's a while. So I'll be here no matter what. And that's really what I want. The 42 albums, 42 albums I have recorded and uh, produced in the last 40 years are most of them are on eBay, and 24 of them, since I sold out of the discs, they're all uh, I give away for free, or they're on iTunes. But, um... As you can see, it takes a lot to stop a train, as the toilet thing says. <laughs> and uh, there are certain people that are really stuck by me. Lisa Landauer, you're one of them. Colleen, you're one of them. There's a group of people, and uh, I want to thank you for that. And Heather Vogel uh, of Lately. I wish you well. So I think that's all the time I got time for. And uh, uh, Shout out to Jeff Rue. Thank you for calling me. And Kevin Sanders, who's always been a good friend of mine. So uh, I'm sure I've left people out, but I'm kind of uh, taken by these lights here. Or why always aces? I've been going to sleep every night listening to Oasis. I love the band, man. What can I say? So thank you. Good night. I'm Matt McCourt. Visit usmetal.com, and uh, that's it. Hey, visit usmental.com. I've got CDs for sale, T-shirts for all the bands I've been in, and uh, all the albums on discography. And uh, then in the band section, there's 15 of the bands that I recorded and uh, did some big-time gigs with. All the Lambs of Wild Dogs, Dr. Mastermind, Evil Genius, The Mentors, uh, Eastside Stranglers, The Blues. <laughs> Yeah, I had a blues band in the 90s, a heavy metal blues band that would play every week with Kip Doran on guitar and Mike Albertson and Scott Spencer and sometimes Dean Castanova. Uh, oh, yeah, my motorhead too. Uh, well, that's enough. I think I've talked enough today, so I'll see you later. <laughs>